highly processed fats like canola oil, like soybean oil, like sunflower oil, the seed oils. So somebody recently told me a story about how they were able to get pregnant, but they continued to have miscarriages. And they read my book and completely overhauled their food, got rid of all those pesticides I talk about, all that stuff, all those artificial estrogens, all the personal care products, just overhauled all the things I recommended. And they're having their first child. So today, I want to move away from artificial estrogens. And by the way, they're huge, hugely important. And, you know, sometimes you have natural imbalances with hormones. And I recommend looking into Thomas Hilger's and looking him up. If you, if you remove all your artificial estrogens and you still have problems and with your natural hormone levels. But first, I want to talk about one other important aspect to fertility or infertility, and that's weight. And that's good fats and cholesterol. So let's start with this paper from 2007, 2007 in a journal called Epidemiology. And it's called BMI, Body Mass Index, in adolescence and number of children in adulthood. So they say body weight is associated with reproduction and related behaviors. This is the biggest thing. After artificial estrogens, this is the reason I see infertility. So they looked at over a thousand women from 1980 to 2001, and get this, the BMI number of children such as underweight adolescents had a 10 to 15 to 16% fewer children in adulthood. Underweight, most people forget that, and that's what I see all the time. Overweight adolescents had a four to eight percent fewer children, and obese adolescents had 32 to 38 percent fewer children. So obviously obesity is a problem for fertility. But most people know that. Most people don't know that being underweight is a significantly huge problem for fertility. So one of the ways people can resolve that is eating good fats, and we'll talk about that in a second. But first, 2014, I've got this paper from the Canadian Journal of Diabetic Practice and Research. And the reason I've got to go to Canada to find this is because in the United States, our drug companies selling statins like crazy, making billions of dollars. So there's so much confusion within the scientific research about LDL and cholesterol and trying to make cholesterol out to be just this terrible thing. And I'm writing a book on it called Blubber Brain, but in the US it's messy. Let's go to Canada. This paper a nutrition, called a nutrition screening form for female infertility patients. They looked at 300 female infertility patients and found that 43% of the women had a body mass index either below 20 or above 25. So again, it's either underweight or overweight. You've got to have a balance. But get this, almost half reported a history of dieting, a history of dieting and limiting energy and essential nutrients. A high number reported vegetarianism, low fat or low cholesterol diets and people can improve their fertility by eating more cholesterol in a lot of cases, especially for underweight. But let me talk about that. That's really important. So let's talk about good fats. And I've got a little chart here. It has a whole bunch of fats listed, butter, coconut oil, you know, canola oil, olive oil, and the composition of those oils. And again, I'm writing about this in my next book, but for now, let's just say, let's just take canola oil, and which is mostly oleic acid and you know, people recognize this as a bad fat. It's, and, and it is. You cook with it. It's highly processed. It gets oxidized through processing. It gets oxidized through cooking. And it's unhealthy. So look at olive oil, though. It's almost the same profile as canola oil. And yet, most studies show that it's beneficial. It's healthy. Most people recognize that. But again, the profile is pretty much the same as canola oil. What's going on? Well, there's less processing. Think about it. You're just cold pressing olive oil. And, and even with that, there's different qualities of olive oil. And so in a lot of cases with a lot of research, a lot, you get a lot of, you get discrepancy because these scientists are using highly processed, chemical loaded, oxidized fat, and they're making conclusions about things like fertility or other health outcomes using garbage. 
they're feeding these animals terrible fats, expired, you know, not expired, but highly oxidized, highly processed, bad fats. If you took olive oil and you cooked, cooked it a lot, or you put processing chemicals, that would give you similar health problems. So in a lot of cases, it's not necessarily about the fatty acid composition, although I love omega-3s, but it oftentimes comes down to the, the oxidation, especially in light of fertility. So here's a final paper. This is 2017, and it's in a journal called Advances in Hygiene and Experimental Medicine. It's a Polish journal from Poland. And the title of this paper is The Role of Oxidative Stress. Oxidative stress. That's things like fatty acids that are oxidized from cooking or just being processed. Oxidative stress in female infertility and in vitro fertilization. And they say in Poland, one, over, about one million pairs require infertility treatment. Just in Poland. It's insane. They say infertility affects about 13% of the world's population. 13 to 15%. That's a huge number. This is 2017. The number just keeps going up. They say recent studies show that increased production of reactive oxygen species, again, highly processed fats like canola oil, like soybean oil, like sunflower oil, the seed oils, um, not avocado oil or olive oil, right? These oils that you press, you cold press, coconut oil, these are good fats. There's so many studies that show this. Um, reactive oxygen species, an important factor in um, etiopathogenesis. Path that means essentially in um, <laughs> the path pathology, the beginning of pathology of pregnancy. That means essentially infertility <laughs> and affects female reproduction. Reactive oxygen species affects reproduction, causes infertility. What's reactive oxygen species again? oxidized fat in a lot of cases. It is found that oxidative stress may damage the oocytes, the eggs, and may impair their fertilization capacity. This is huge. So not only do you need to make sure you're not below the weight, if you're, if you're having infertility problems, make sure your weight, you know, you've got healthy amounts of body mass, but also make sure you're eating good fats, not highly processed junk, not soy, not soy oil not canola. Read the book Deep Nutrition by Kate Shanahan. She talks about canola oil like crazy. She really explains it well about how it gets oxidized, how those double bonds get oxidized. Again, I'm writing a book on this too, and I hope you can I hope you'll check that book out. It'll explain a lot, but you know, don't demonize cholesterol. Cholesterol is extremely healthy. And by the way, I should have mentioned this before. Cholesterol is how your body makes vitamin D. That's the precursor for vitamin D. You know, you definitely need vitamin D if you want to be fertile. Cholesterol is the precursor for estrogen, for testosterone, for sex hormones. You need those sex hormones to be fertile. So don't demonize cholesterol. It's hugely important for fertility. The studies are messy because of the statin situation, this multi-billion dollar drug industry. But make sure you're up to weight, you're eating good fats, eating cholesterol, avoiding artificial estrogens, and... Hopefully you'll have better success with your fertility.